I recently visited South Florida, where I was born and raised. I was able to travel US 27 from Central Florida to Dade County. Along the road, I made some mental observations about this road, the canals, the general area, and how they affect the evaluation of the flat tire murders and canal cases. To describe US 27 from Palm Beach County to Dade County as isolated is certainly an understatement. The surrounding area consists largely of sugarcane fields and is bordered a little further north by Lake Okeechobee. There were no residents that I observed, and the only reason to be on this road would be to go somewhere else, unless you were involved in agriculture. The canal that borders US 27 is largely unseen from the road, but occasionally you will observe that there is a canal there. During the, the day, the drive is monotonous and it is boring at night. Driving at night, although the highway is now separated by a divider, would, in my opinion, be dangerous. This is certainly not the place you'd want to have car trouble. The bodies of the victims left in the canal near US-27, Nancy Fox, Arietta Tinker, Robin Loesch, Barbara Schreiber, and Belinda Zetterauer, were clearly left there, in my opinion, by a cautious but concerned killer whose primary objective was to get rid of his victims' bodies so that no one would find them. Judith Osterling, discussed in earlier episodes, was the only case that was solved, and her killers likely chose this location because of its isolation. The bodies of Elise Rapp and Ronnie Gorland, however, were found in a canal on Northwest 138th Street and 105th Avenue in Dade County. While this is not an isolated area, it is a heavily industrial area, even in 2021. The city of Medley is located to the west, which is an industrial city with few residents. An extensive amount of businesses, including trucking facilities, are located in Medley. The killer who dumped the bodies of these two victims in this canal, unlike the other cases, may have appeared less concerned about the victims, the discovery of the victims, as it would appear far more likely that they would be discovered fairly quickly. Given that US-27 runs directly past Medley, this leads me to believe that there may be some connection to that city and the flat tire and canal murders. This issue will be explored further in upcoming podcasts. The 163rd Street Mall, where the cars of Ronnie Gorlin and Elise Rapp were found, is a typical suburban mall. Seeing the parking lot was a chilling reminder of what occurred 46 years ago to these innocent young women. Finally, the Sunset West Shopping Center, where Barbara Stevens' body was found in the woods behind the mall, is a very public area in 2021. But in 1975, the woods behind the shopping center provided her killer with a convenient location to place her body. Again, this is a suburban area where it's likely that the victim would eventually be found, unlike the canal bordering US-27, which is a isolated area. Returning to South Florida and viewing these locations where the crimes occurred was a sobering reminder that these cases have remained unsolved despite the best efforts of law enforcement. But who is responsible? My upcoming book, The Flat Tire Murders, Unsolved Crimes of a South Florida Serial Killer, will explore these cases. It will be released in the upcoming month and is available on Amazon and barnesandnoble.com. I welcome your thoughts and comments. Please leave them below and thank you for listening.